Hey guys, welcome back to Alpha Physio Pelvic Care, all things pelvic health. My name is Anastasia Varova. I'm practicing pelvic floor physiotherapist here in still very sunny Cyprus. Today, I would like to highlight three things that most of the moms that come through my door for, for post-pregnancy assessment are not aware that makes their diastasis recti abdominal separation worse. Diastasis recti abdominal separation is a very common occurrence in women and it is separation of the white line that connects to abdominal muscles, rectus abdominis and also beyond that deeper abdominals and it happens during pregnancy. Diastasis recti is actually normal accommodation of the body for the growing baby and some research shows it will affect between 50 to 100% of women towards the end of the pregnancy term. So most of the women will experience some form of abdominal separation. The thing is that many women will not notice it after the birth or it will come back and close very quickly and some will have it more. Besides doing exercises and post-pregnancy rehabilitation, there are three things that many women do in their ADLs, active daily living, so everyday things, that can actually exacerbate abdominal separation. Let's have a look at them. Number one, baby wearing, especially low on the abdominals. I see quite few moms baby wearing. I was myself baby wearing my kids and they have their babies really low sitting on their abdominal area and of course you get tired whilst baby wearing and slowly you start to get that pressure of the baby especially when they grow in the beginning they might be really, really tiny and light but as they grow the pressure on the abdominals especially when the baby sits kind of on the diaphragm area on the abdominal grows what would i suggest to do in this case no, I would not suggest to completely abandon the baby wearing, but I do suggest to become selective about it. So maybe choose baby wearing when it's really, really necessary. Do it selectively when, for example, you know baby is cranky, you need to put them to sleep, or you're just going for a short walk. And even in the short walks, I would suggest you maybe start with baby wearing and when the baby falls asleep, then put them back in the cot. So really wear the baby when it's really, really necessary. Number two, to make it easier uh, for you, definitely start your post-pregnancy recovery journey early because you kind of counterbalance the baby wearing, you know, the pressure, the weight with your uh, rehabilitation exercises and it will definitely have a, a very good positive impact. Also, if you do prefer your baby wearing, make sure you have a really good quality carrier that distributes weight equally through your shoulders and also through your hips. Not so much your low back, but really through your hips. I personally, my favorite, not an advertisement guys, not, it's Ergo Baby. Uh, I got myself an Ergo Baby. It's um, a, a reasonable invest uh, investment of money. It's not the cheapest on the market, but it's absolutely worth it. I got an Ergo Baby and um, specifically this one. And uh, my, uh, I worn them with my kids. I have two boys, two years difference. I was wearing the first one in front. I was wearing first at the back. I was wearing the second one in front and I was wearing the second one also at the back. And it really, really lasts. It has great distribution of the weight of the hips, on the hips. You don't have to get that one, but as soon as the carrier really distributes the weight of the baby well around your hips and through your shoulders, do the selective baby wearing. Number two, what makes it worse? And this is the one that you just need to create it as a habit. And I will show you here, mom's getting up, especially in the middle of the night when baby cries through the abdominal. So getting up like this, okay? If you do it once, nothing really will happen. But as we know, mothers will get up again and again and again and going up through the abdominal muscles when you did not go through rehabilitation period, they're still weak, you will just re-emphasize that diastasis recti. So what you should learn instead, you should learn instead to roll. 
And believe me, it will become a really, really a, a habit if you make it a habit. So try like one week challenge, rolling over to the side, consciously reminding yourself, and then it will become a habit. It even has become a habit for me. And I do have strong abs. I don't have diastasis recti. But uh, because I do teach post-pregnancy moms, I made habit for myself as well. So they follow me and they follow this kind of pattern. So if you lay down... You just go on your side and up. It, it makes it maybe 0.05 seconds longer, but it really saves you a lot of pressure on your abs and on your pelvic. Number three, what really makes your diastasis recti worse is something probably you did not expect. When moms come with me to me with their diastasis recti, they complain about their tummy. And when, the, when I start to take the history, I kind of get more information. <laughs> tell me more, tell me more what's happening. Nine out of 10% cases, they will have problems with the pelvic floor, which will mean constipation. And they will also have leaks. That means there is pelvic floor weakness, most likely. There is probably some kind of pelvic organ prolapse going on. And of course, because of overstretched abdominal, there is less compression and support of inner organs in gut, so slower gut as well. Pelvic floor issues not to be ignored and work together with diastasis recti. No matter how much you work on your diastasis recti through the exercises, uh, your abdominal exercises, if you do not get your attention to your pelvic floor and breathing, of course, together, if you just focus the work on abdominals, it will not have the same effect. Even when people come to me with diastasis recti, uh, over talking on the phone, I do offer them to do pelvic floor check, the internal vaginal examination, just to see how is their pelvic floor functioning. Because most of the time, I've, I cannot recall people who had serious diastasis recti and they had well-functioning, strong pelvic floor. Most of the times, vast majority of the times, pelvic floor function will be diminished. So these two rehabs are going together. This is why I don't call it pelvic floor rehab, diastasis recti rehab, post-pregnancy rehab. They go together. Let me know guys in the comments what you think about this. Have you been baby wearing yourself? Have you been getting up from, uh, from the abdominals? Or would you like to know something more about diastasis recti? Did you wish you knew more? Uh, what was your diastasis recti journey? Feel free to share in the comments. Uh, I will be very happy to answer any of your questions or maybe you have some other suggestions for a new video. And I will see you back very, very soon. Take care.